The Sony A5100 has been the golden standard for content creators for years, and while the out-of-the-box kit lens is very respectable because it's versatile and fits many situations, it's not the master of any one situation, including indoor video capture at 1080p 30 or 60, which a lot of content creators use this camera for. Today we're going to unbox and compare five of the most common lenses for the Sony A5100, or any Sony E-mount camera for that matter, but this video was shot on a 5100, so that's what we're talking about here. I am a pretty big fan of the stock kit lens with the A5100, and a lot of people actually purchase this lens individually and add it to their kit because it is very versatile. The biggest complaints for me is the aperture can only go as low as f3.5, which doesn't let in a whole heck of a lot of light. So if you are in a low light situation, which a lot of you are using this as a webcam indoors, maybe a couple of face lights on your desk, that's about it. And maybe sometimes you want to turn those off because you're focusing on your monitor playing a game and you're not getting the best low light performance, not to mention I wish this lens got just slightly wider, but overall a very good lens and I have been using it consistently for about eight months now. Now the standard or stock Sony kit lens that comes with the A5100 if you do opt for the bundle does have protective caps on the front and back of the lens and is wrapped in a dust cover. I will be overlaying some b-roll of the unboxing of the A5100 starting with the licensed Sony FE 50mm f1.8. It is going to be slathered in orange as most Sony camera equipment is and you have a little badge here saying this is for 35mm full frame e-mount cameras but it will still work with compact APS-C sensor cameras such as the A5100. Okay, I like how Sony has done this. On this side over here, you have your documentation. And in here you have your camera, your glass wrapped in some bubble wrap. Very similar to virtually every other Sony lens I have purchased in the past. Then you do have plastic lens covers on each side, which is fantastic. This one is threaded. And on this side, you will pinch and remove the lens cover like that. So I would say very good packaging. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Sony Knuckle Duster 3000. That's not the actual name of it, but I want you to make note of a couple of things here. One, as I rolled my big ass into frame, autofocus worked because it is an electronic lens. Two, that is a very intense depth of field effect, that bokeh or bokeh, if you will. My background is incredibly blurry, yet I am crisp and clear. But if I get out of the way for just a minute, the room is crispy as well. Now, the only thing that would make this lens just a skosh better is if you could manipulate the digital zoom. Oh wait, you can, but guess what? All you can do is zoom in even further. And if you look at my GoPro footage in the lower corner of the screen, you'll see I'm actually pretty darn far away from my screen. I couldn't game or do anything with my PC. My keyboard's not in front of me. Where I usually sit when I'm using my PC is right here. And don't get me wrong, I like you guys, but this is a little bit too close for comfort. There's a little peek at that digital zoom for you. Little hiccup with that autofocus for a minute. Bam. Hello. Next up, we have the TT Artisan 35mm f1.4. Now, the packaging at first glance is not stimulating me. We'll see if that changes once I pop her hood and take a look under the bonnet. Okay, opens up like a box to a massive engagement ring. Will you take videos with me? You've got a warranty card for your glass over here. Sweet, couple of QR codes. Go ahead and scan those. This will take you to a very reputable website, I'm sure. You have an instruction pamphlet that is primarily Chinese characters. There's a couple of blurbs of English text littered throughout, but not the most useful. A little bit of foam here on the top. I like to see that. Little silica gel packet here. Dispose of that properly. And what seems to be a toy here, which is the lens itself. It is in some foam as well. Gonna give it a couple of points for that. Little ASMR for you. We do have covers on both sides of the glass. That is good. I was partially expecting not to. Is this aluminum? It is, or aluminum. This is now the TT Artisan or the Thinking Artisan. I had to move the camera about a foot back, which is as far back as I can move it without having to change mounts. And as you can see, it is still zoomed in very close. And as it is a prime lens, there's really nothing we can do other than physically moving the location of your camera further away. But I will say the video quality is actually quite crisp. There's very minimal noise with my current settings. And there also is a good depth of field effect with that bokeh. This is the minimum aperture of f1.4. And this is the other end of the spectrum at 3.5. Here I I'm manually adjusting the focus and you can still use the digital zoom of the A5100, although it doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. That is all the way zoomed in and this is all the way zoomed out. 
Next. Next up, we have the Altura Photo 6.5 millimeter F2.0. Now the box is a little bit dented on top, so I'm a little bit nervous. These bad boys are fragile. Okay, little moisture wicking packet and a piece of documentation. Make sure your camera knows that you are using a manual adjustment lens and it won't have any electronic connection with your camera. You'll be adjusting everything analog. A little block of foam in here, more foam in the bottom. Very nice, very nice. Awesome little carrying case with some faux carbon fiber. Okay, lens is held in there nice and tight. Ooh, a little purple trim in there as well. Very nice. Not a whole heck of a lot of padding inside the carrying case. Do of course have plastic covers on both sides of the glass. My God, that is going to be a wide angle shot. Talk about fisheye. That is salmon cornea. This one is the only one thus far that came with a carrying case, which makes sense that I'm going to give it five out of five for the packaging and included accessories. Now this craziness you're seeing now is the Altera 6.5 millimeter F 2.0, which is clearly a circular fisheye lens, which I'm not a huge fan of this look. Let's go ahead and bump it in just a little bit. Now this does add a lot of noise noise or fuzz, basically a low resolution pixelation that you see right now, especially on an APS-C sensor camera, which is already cropped in. Now the front dial wheel does absolutely nothing on this camera whatsoever, which is unfortunate because it is a nice rubberized coating and it would be nice if this actually adjusted anything. Now this is 190 degrees, which is obviously freakishly wide. So you're going to be picking up a ton of your room, which can be good if maybe you're a gamer and you're trying to capture your hand during gameplay. This lens does have a fixed focal length of 6.5 millimeters. However, you can adjust the aperture from f2 to f22 which i will do now so me personally this lens is going to be a no-go however this is a very unique look and maybe you're going for this kind of shot next up we have the miki hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly probably not make a mike 6 to 11 millimeter so not a prime lens this is adjustable with an aperture of f 3.5 little foam block in here i like to see that good weight to this box here that's because the lens is heavy kevin we've cracked it we've cracked the da vinci code little moisture wicking or desiccant packet you do have your documentation and a microfiber wiping cloth you do have a soft plush carrying bag, a little booklet with some tips for lens care, and at the bottom of the box, more foam to keep your lens in place. The lens itself is covered in this plastic bag, and there is, of course, plastic covers on each side of the lens. Now, this is with the Miki, and I have to say I like this lens quite a darn bit. As you can see, there's quite a bit of aberration around the outside, where it is slightly distorted, kind of tunnel vision, like a fisheye lens. However, you're not losing nearly as much quality or resolution as the image is not looking as cropped in digitally. Now, you do have three adjustment rings on this lens. The front two closest to you are rubberized and have a nice resistance. And the one closest to the body of the camera is gonna be for your aperture. And that is simply a metal ring. So the ring closest to you is kind of a hard zoom, which punches out into the actual fisheye lens. If you wanna do something cinematic for an intro or something, hey, morning guys. Then the middle ring is gonna to be to adjust your focus as you can see. And your innermost ring near the body of the camera is going to be your aperture. Is there image stabilization with this lens? Can you use the digital zoom of the camera with this lens? Pretty big fan of this lens, but let's see what we got next. Bringing up the rear of the Tukus, we have the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4. Now, I guess you could say I saved the best for last as this is by far the best selling aftermarket lens for a lot of Sony cameras, but especially the A5100 and a lot of other APS-C sensor, crop sensor cameras. Not the best packaging, just some basic egg carton in here. Oh golly jeepers little plastic bag to keep it free of fingerprints, dust, and debris. And you do have a plastic lens cover on each side of this thing feels incredibly premium. Like it has a nice rubberized coating on the spin dial here. This thing just feels incredibly high quality in the hand. And I also like the fact that you do have a dot and a cutout or notch here where you can align where to put on your dust cover, which is cool. However, because this lens had virtually no padding, it was just wrapped in that egg carton or cardboard. I'm going to go ahead and give the included packaging a two out of five. Also, there's more documentation included than there should be for something as simple as a lens. I think they could condense four instruction brochures probably into one piece of documentation. This is the Sigma and I get it. The background's super blurry. I'm crisp and punched out from the background and the angle's pretty wide. However, it is about the same width, I would say, as the standard kit lens. Here's what I will say at $385, which is what the Sigma's currently going for, which is on sale, by the way. It is by far the most expensive lens on this comparison, on and in or around this comparison. One of the participants. And it's not that much different than the stock kit lens, to be honest. Yes, the background's slightly blurrier. Yes, the video captures are slightly crisper, but 
but the maximum field of view is virtually identical. I know that because with the standard kit lens, which I've been using for about eight months, I can generally get the edge of the Atari 2600 and just slightly past the controller wall. You can see right there. But here is where this lens really steps away from the stock kit lens and shows why it's worth the money. This is with just the light of my monitor with the digital zoom fully punched in and you can still pretty cleanly see the details of my face with minimal noise and you can tell that the background is indeed blurred. So low light performance is quite a darn bit better with the Sigma lens over the standard kit lens. Well, we're going to autofocus on my face today. Alrighty, stallions and stallionettes. Hopefully this comparison was beneficial for you, especially if you are an owner of the A5100 or you're picking one up in the near future, which I do recommend because they've been out forever and they are constantly on sale. Personally, I have made the transition to using the Sigma lens as my primary daily driver. But if I do ever have a whoopsie-daisy with the Sigma and crack glass, I do have a backup on standby, that being the stock kit lens, which is pretty damn decent, especially when you consider that a large portion of your audience watching you on YouTube is watching your content on mobile phones and tablets, so small screens. Unless your viewers are tech nerds that are on Pixel Patrol busting out the monocle to look for pixel density and needs of brightness on their monitor, I, I don't think there's, I don't think they're really even going to notice. But I do, and that's why I'm using the Sigma on the daily. All these lenses are linked in the description below, and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself, and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace